Hey, it's Phil with DTF Superstore, and we have gotten a lot of comments asking how to do halftones in Affinity, and a couple asking how to do it in Corel Draw. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do halftoning in both of these softwares. Let's get started with Affinity first. All right, I'm here in Affinity Photo 2. I'm gonna go to File, Place. I'm gonna go ahead and add my artwork here. Right up here on the top, I'm gonna hit Align Center for both the vertical and horizontal. And we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. Right click, duplicate. Now we're gonna go ahead and make this black and white by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Black and White. And we're gonna go ahead and add a Levels Adjustment. Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. We'll bring our white level back just a little bit, just to make sure that we get some good opacity in some of these areas. And we'll crush our black levels down just to get that edge feathered out. Now I'll select my layer as well as the adjustments by holding shift and clicking the pumpkin layer here. I'll right click and merge visible. We can go ahead and get rid of those layers. Now with our mask layer selected, I'm gonna go to layer, new live filter layer, colors, halftone. Now I actually love the way this works. Rather than going through all the steps in Photoshop, you can actually visually see right here exactly what you're doing. I'm gonna change our dot mode to round and I'm gonna bring our cell size down. We'll go ahead and zoom in, holding the Alter Option key and mouse wheel. And we're gonna bring that cell size down until we've got a nice resolution. But we don't wanna go too small. A, it's not gonna look good. B, we're not gonna get a good print if we have way too many pixels less than three by three pixels wide. So I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit more. I think six is gonna be a good number here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna change my screen angle, and I'm gonna take this to 30. Now you can type in whatever you want here. You could do 27, 33. You know, I think 27 is gonna look pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit Merge. That's gonna go ahead and rasterize the changes, the halftone that we've created to the layer. We are almost done. However, we still have some gray pixels, which are gonna end up being semi-transparent pixels when we convert this to a mask. So let's go ahead and add a threshold. Layer, new adjustment layer, threshold. I'll zoom out so we can see what we're doing here. And just like in Photoshop, as we change this threshold slider, going to the left, we get more dots, going to the right, we get less. Basically what this is doing is it's taking any value to the left and right of where we're selecting, and it's hard cutting. Everything to the left is black, everything to the right is white. I'm gonna go ahead and choke back a little bit to get rid of some of these errant pixels. You can see we've got some kind of like right around here that are all by themselves. I think I'm just gonna choke those back a smidge. I think that looks pretty good. And merge. All right, so now we have a great looking halftone mask, which is prepped for DTF with no semi-transparent pixels. So I'm gonna right click on that layer, rasterize to mask, and then just drag that mask onto our original artwork layer. And just like that, we have a wonderfully halftoned image that is ready to print for DTF. This looks really good, and I think it's gonna print great. The one thing that you need to do before you save this is go to document, transparent background. So I've got a little Photoshop document that basically just has a shirt texture and a little shirt texture overlay, just to kind of take a look and see how things are gonna look on a shirt when it actually prints. And this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm gonna say that's not bad at all. I like it. Let's move on to Coral Draw. All right, I'm making a new document in Coral Draw. I'm making it eight by eight, 300 DPI. Same with Affinity, same with this, and same with any software. We wanna make sure that we are sized to our print size and we are at 300 DPI. We don't want any resizing to happen when we're doing halftones because any stretching could create semi-transparent pixels. I'll make sure that this is RGB and hit okay. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and place our graphics, file, place, and I'm gonna hit enter here. That's gonna place it centered and we're gonna duplicate this once. Edit, duplicate. Now since this one got scooched over a little bit, we'll take the alignment drop down and center to page. Just to keep things organized, I'm gonna right click on the layer and hit rename, and we'll call this Matte. We're gonna go up to Bitmaps, Convert to Bitmap, and we're gonna change this to Grayscale. I'm gonna make sure that Dithered, Anti-Aliasing, and Transparent Background are unchecked. And then we're gonna add a Levels Adjustment. Effects, Adjust, Levels. Grabbing the white slider and pulling it back, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in Affinity, 
and just try to make sure that we've got some opacity in the areas that we want full color and bringing the black slider over just to soften out those edges and give some contrast. Now each image is going to be different, but remember what we're looking for here is things that you want fully opaque, we're gonna be white. Things that you want fully transparent are gonna be black. Things you want a half tone are gonna to be in those gray areas. Now we're gonna to go to effects, color transform, and half tone. Now we're not done, We've got a couple more steps. Now as you zoom in, you're gonna notice you might have some artifacts like this line right here and then like everything in our black area, I'm not sure if you can see this on YouTube or not, has these little gray half tones in it and stuff. We're gonna be cleaning those up procedurally. All right, so I'm going to set my max dock radius to three and then the degrees, we'll go to 27. 27 seemed to work for us for affinity, so let's try it out here. Next, we're gonna go to effects, transform, threshold. Just like in affinity, just like in Photoshop, it's doing the same thing. We're setting the threshold of what's going to be black and white. But straight out of the gate, when you take a look at this, we do have gray in here. That's because this is set to black and not by level. We're gonna go ahead and choose by level and instantly you'll see we now have clean black and white halftones. We can adjust this threshold as needed. And the one thing you wanna look out for is these wispy areas. For instance, here on the left, this smoke. If you push too far, you'll lose a lot of it and you wanna make sure that if you want something to be printed, you need areas that are not just single pixels. You need some gatherings of at least three pixels. I think that looks pretty good. Now, one thing that's great about the way that these are stacked in layers for the bitmap effects is that you can actually go through and after you set your threshold, come and change the angle of your halftones and see what different angles look like. You could still play with all of these. You don't have to be locked in to one specific setting. You can even go back and change our levels before the halftones to be able to change exactly how much gets halftoned from in here and see that dynamically, which I think is pretty cool. I'd love to see features like this in Photoshop. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, Coral Draw runs a little bit differently than most every other image editor in that transparency is actually white. I'm guessing this is a holdover from this being primarily designed for web graphics and print graphics as seen by the export screen where you can choose a 56K dial-up modem as a preset for PNG, but I digress. Let's go ahead and invert this image by going to Effects, Transform, Invert Colors. All right, so up here on the right, you'll see we are currently in our Properties panel. We're gonna go to our Objects panel, which by the way, if you got lost at any point because these panels didn't show up, you can go to Window, Inspectors, there's Properties, there's Objects. All right, so that matte layer right there, we're gonna export that out. File, export. We'll go ahead and name it. We wanna make sure that this is PNG, it's gonna to default to PDF, and we want everything unchecked. We'll hit export, and then these are the settings you're gonna to wanna to use. I choose the PNG 24-bit. We're making sure that it's RGB color 24-bit. We're gonna turn off transparency, turn off anti-aliasing, we're not embedding a color profile, no interlacing, and we're gonna twirl down transformation and choose maintain size. We don't want any transformations in size, so that way this lines up just right. We'll hit okay. And we can go ahead and hide that layer. Now, we don't wanna delete that layer because if you did wanna make any changes, you can go straight back to it, make those changes, export it, and try again. We'll select our original artwork layer and go to the properties panel. We'll choose the transparency, and this last one right here is the apply bitmap pattern. Now for you, it's gonna load up with the default bricks. In order to get our image in, just underneath that where it says new source, we have an option for new source from file. Now if anybody here does know Corel Draw more than me, please comment below how I can use new source from workspace or new source from document to take it directly from the layer instead of needing to export. I'm sure everyone would love that. So we're gonna click new source from file, choose our pumpkin mat that we created, and now we have a four up version and we need to fix that. So we're gonna choose the transparency tool on the far left and I'm going to turn on snapping to the document grid and then I'm gonna drag this to the center and it should snap right at the four inch by four inch center. 
And then we're going to resize this to the size of our document. If you hold shift, it won't get all squirrely on you. And with that snap enabled, we know that we're hitting it just right on the money for it to be eight inch by eight inch. Okay, our half tone is complete, but we have one more step to do before we can export this. With that layer selected, we're gonna go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, RGB color, and transparent background. We're gonna go ahead and check that. This is going to commit the changes that we made, rasterize them with a transparent background. So when we go to file, export, save it as a PNG, we can check the transparency box and you can see we are getting transparency in this. I'm gonna make sure that anti-alias color profiling, all of those things are unchecked and once again, maintain size is checked. Back in Photoshop for the preview and we can see this looks good. We've got a great half tone. Honestly, if you were to put these up against Photoshop halftone methods, I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. I will say that you're getting better results from Affinity than you are Corel Draw, and obviously some trial and error and some optimizing of your image will help with that. For instance, we're losing a little bit of the glow over here and a little bit more of the smoke, but overall, we still have a half-toned image, which is going to give you an excellent hand feel, reduce the amount of ink that you're using, and overall make you a better producer for DTF garments. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. If you personally use Affinity or Corel Draw and you saw something in here that I could have done better, let me know, and let's share it with everybody. Thanks for watching.